All right, how is everybody doing today? Welcome back to another video. And today, what I have for everyone is my full review of the Google Pixel Buds A series, okay? Now, I've been using these earbuds for a good amount of time, and I feel like I've gathered all my thoughts and opinions on them. So that's what I'm going to share with everyone in this full review here today. Along with everything that I've experienced, we're going to go ahead and go over everything I feel is important for you to know. And hopefully by the end of this video, you guys and gals know if these earbuds are worth picking up. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Now starting off here, the first thing I want to talk about is the overall build quality and design of the buds themselves. Now build quality wise, these Pixel Bud A series are built primarily out of plastic. Now it does have a little bit of metal inside the earbud there, but it's built primarily out of plastic. And that does a few things. That helps with the overall comfort because that makes them very lightweight. That helps with the overall durability because that means if they're dropped, they're more apt to survive. But that being said, in terms of the overall build quality, I would have to say the Pixel Buds A here are top notch in my overall opinion in terms of the overall build quality and design. And I have to say in terms of the design, I'm a big fan of that ear hook, ear wing design that rests inside your earlobe or ear canal. It makes it a really, really solid, secure, and comfortable fit for extended listening sessions. So in terms of the overall build quality and design on the Pixel Buds A's, I would have to say it's top notch in my overall opinion. Okay, top notch indeed. Now, moving on, let's jump into some other categories. The next category being the core features on these. Now, core features wise, these bad boys support Bluetooth 5.0. Yes, I know that's an older standard, but it's still really, really good with a standard range of 10 meters or 33 feet. Okay, they are IPX4 water resistant and sweat proof for the buds and then IPX2 splash proof for the case, okay? So that does mean that you can take the buds with you on workouts. If you're a runner and you get caught in the rain, you should be okay, but be careful with full submerging, especially for the case, okay? So IPX4 for the buds, IPX2 for the case in terms of waterproofing and sweat resistance, okay? We do have 12 nanometer drivers built into the buds, which is supposed to provide really good overall sound quality. And I can vouch for that. Sound quality on these is really good. And also really good passive noise cancellation with the air sensors and holes and vents built into the buds to equalize the pressure. And again, that passive noise cancellation i can vouch for that it's actually really good it's not super uh isolation so you can indeed hear yourself talk a little bit but with something playing it does drown out the surroundings very nicely so really good to see we have passive noise cancellation built in here which gives it some sort of ambient mode we do have dual beam forming microphones on these earbuds here which are supposed to support really good overall microphone performance. So we got one right there. Y'all can see it right there. And then we have another one down here in the stem at the bottom right there. And spoiler alert, we're going to talk about it a little bit later. But the microphone performance on these are top notch in my overall opinion. And I didn't have any problems. But we do have dual beam forming microphones on each earbud. So two microphones on each earbud. And the microphone performance is top notch. Okay. Moving on. Other core features here. We do have USB type C built into the buds. So say it with me y'all. One cable to rule them all. USB type C. All the things. Okay. And it does support uh, fast charging. Okay. So in particular, three minutes of charge should get you about three hours of overall usage. Or 
uh, what? 15 minutes of charge should get you about three hours of overall usage. My bad, y'all. Got a little tongue-tied there. And I can vouch for that because I did forget to charge the buds one day. And I did want to go to the gym. Threw them in the case. It's about a 20-minute ride to the gym. By the time I got to the gym, they were at about 75% charge from dead. And I was able to go through my workout without any, without any issues. So that 15 minutes of charge, three hours of battery life, I can vouch for that. That is indeed valid, okay? And these earbuds do support stereo mode usage as well as independent mode usage as well. So you can use these earbuds both together at the same time or one earbud at a time. Really nice overall feature there. I'm always compelled to point that out when earbuds support that or don't support that. And these do, so I'm happy to see that. And then last, but certainly not least, in terms of the core features, these bad boys do have a dedicated companion application. We're going to talk about it a little bit more in detail as we go on throughout the video. And I'm going to give y'all an in-depth walkthrough of the companion application in this full review right here. But you will need the Pixel Buds application if you have an Android device. You won't need it if you have an iOS device, okay? Okay, so that essentially goes over all of the core features. And in my opinion, Google has packed in some really solid core features on these, okay? Now let's keep it moving. Let's dive into some other categories for this review. Now up next now, let's go ahead and talk about the overall sound quality, the overall volume and the overall base of these earbuds, okay? And if you want a more live interpretation of what I'm about to talk about, I will link up all of my extended coverage down below in the video description. So if you wanna see the live fit and sound demo, which is basically what I'm reiterating in this full review, check out that video, I'll link it up down below. But in terms of the overall sound quality, I have to say it is top notch on these. There is no distortion on the low or the high ends of the volume spectrum. Talking about the overall volume in general, it is top notch as well. These earbuds do get more than loud enough for me to fully immerse myself in what I'm listening to and fully drown out my surroundings. So top notch sound quality, top notch volume. Now talking about the all important bass, I have to say the bass on these is good. It could be a little bit better it's missing a little bit of punch, although it is noticeable. So in my opinion, as a bass lover, I would have to say the bass on these is just good. All right. So that covers the overall sound quality. That covers the overall bass. Now let's move on and talk about another important category. Let's talk about the overall mic quality or IE, the overall microphone performance. All right. Now. I've already showed you guys where the microphones are on these earbuds, diving straight in, and this is from a heavy user standpoint. I would have to say the microphones on these buds are top notch, okay? Whether I was taking phone calls, dictating text messages, dictating emails, taking video calls, whether it be via WhatsApp or Zoom or Facebook Messenger, no issues with the overall microphone performance on these, no issues whatsoever. And I've done a separate dedicated microphone performance video. I'll also link that up down below in the video description as well for you guys and gals to check out. But the overall microphone performance on these earbuds is top notch in my overall opinion. All right, now let's keep it moving. Up next now, I just wanna walk everyone through how you would pair up the earbuds to your iOS device or your Android device, all right? Now, in particular, when you use iOS, you don't need any other additional things aside from the buds in the case in your iOS device. If you use Android, you will need to go out to the Play Store and download the Pixel Buds application. Okay, I'll link it up down below in the video description as well. So the video description should be like a one-stop shop for you guys and gals, and you should be good to go. All right, 
So without further ado, let me walk y'all through how to pair these up to your devices. And we're gonna start off with Android first because Android is the easiest and then we're gonna finish up with iOS. So the first thing we wanna do is prep our devices. Now I've already done this. So we're gonna turn on our display and you can see I got my face unlock here. And then you just wanna go on, swipe down, swipe down, bring up your quick toggles and turn on your Bluetooth, right? Then you want to press and hold on the Bluetooth to bring you into the Bluetooth sub settings, right? So that will set up your Android device, okay? And you want to do the same thing on iOS, which is a little bit different. So turn on your display, okay? Let's use the face unlock. Boom. Right there. And then on iOS, you want to swipe down on the right to get to your quick toggles or notification center, you tap the Bluetooth once to turn it on, then you press and hold to bring you into the sub settings, press and hold again, bring you in further to the sub settings, and you wanna tap on Bluetooth settings to bring you into the Bluetooth menu here, okay? Now your iOS device is ready, okay? So your Android device is prepped, your iOS device is prepped, now we got to prep the earbuds here. Didn't mean to bring this out of the frame. Android device prepped, iOS device prepped. Now, what you want to do is on your Android device, you do want to make sure you go out and get the Pixel Buds application right here. You can see it right here. So y'all can see what that looks like. I'll link it up down below for y'all. But you want to make sure that's installed on your Android device. Okay. And then you also want to make sure that you turn on location. So let me go ahead and turn that on. Right here, turn your location on. That will assist with the pairing process. Okay. Now we can jump back into Bluetooth. Okay. And now we want to prep the buds. So all we have to do to prep the buds is open up the case and put them in the case and make sure we verify that they start charging. So you wanna line up your charging pins with the contact points in the case. One, and you'll see you'll get a nice orange LED when it's lined up and charging correctly. You can see it right there. So that's one. And then let's do two. Right here, you can see two is charging now. And now we just wanna close the case. Let it sit for a second or two. All right, just like that, close the case, let it sit, let it go off, and then now all we need to do is open up the case. Bang. And then you can see right here, it should pop up with our Pixel Buds right here. Okay, let's wait for a little bit and see what it does. Okay, so it's scanning, it's scanning, it's scanning. All right, let me uh let me refresh this. So let's turn it off and we'll turn it back on. And it should pop up. Okay. There's our iPhone, there's our Mi Band. Okay. Pix Pixel Buds not popping up here. Okay? So if it doesn't pop up, what you can do then is you want to either take the buds out of the case and put them down, or you can hit the button on the back of the case right here, okay? And that should turn the case and the buds into pairing mode. You'll get a flashing white LED. So it didn't come up, so we're just gonna push the button. Okay, you see the flashing white LED? Now, Back on our device, we just want to wait for it to pop up. Okay, it actually went away kind of fast. Check that again. All right, hold on. Hold on a minute. So you see it flashing there? Okay, and then we just want to wait for it to, you know what, it might be because I have, I might have another device that's connecting to it. Yeah. Let me pause the video real quick. 
<laughs> Make sure I turn off all my other Bluetooth and we'll be right back. I'll be right back with y'all. Give me one second. Okay? Be right back. All right, everyone. I'm back. Sorry about that. I just went through, made sure the Pixel Buds were disconnected from all of my other applicate, all of my other devices. Then I went ahead and reset the application, cleared out the cache, uninstalled the application, and reinstalled it. And I want to walk y'all through how to do it directly going from the application itself. So you can see right here, it says on the application, when you first launch it, open the case, put the buds into the case, make sure they're properly seated, close the case, all right, make sure it's charging, you saw the orange light, you see the white light, open the case back up, and then we're going to scroll down, and <clears throat> you should see a pop-up in the app here, but I don't see a pop-up. Okay, so we're going to hit get help. And then that's when you see this. If it doesn't go into pairing mode, you can press and hold the button on the back to put it into pairing mode. Wait until you see the light start flashing. So here we go. Button on the back. Push that. You can see it right there. See, it keeps... It keeps stopping my camera because it try, it's trying to get it to connect. But y'all can see that white pulsating LED right there. Now, all we have to do is go back to the Bluetooth on our Android device. And you can see it pops up right there. Boom. And we just want to hit connect. Okay. And to just get a basic connection, that's it. Now, if you wanted to walk you through the whole setup, which is something I'm going to show y'all in a little bit, you hit continue setup here. But we're not going to do that, so we're going to hit done. And it's done. And now if we go back to the settings, you can see we're connected on our Android device for the Google Pixel Buds 8. I am so sorry, y'all. This video is going to have a lot of breaks because every time it tried to connect, it kept pausing my camera. So I had to quickly tap no and then restart the recording. So I don't know how many breaks I'm going to have. But that's how you connect it on your Android device. Now, if we want to connect it on our iOS device, turn it off, and we redo the same process. So now it's disconnected here. We want to press and hold here till we see that white pulsating LED. And then we want to click pair over here. So here we go. Do it again. Press and hold. Got our white pulsating LED. Okay, and then we just want to wait for it to come up over here. And you can see it right there. We're going to tap. And it's going to connect right up. So that's how you would get it to connect on your Android device. And that's how you would get it to connect on your iOS device. Okay. Okay. And now I just want to show you all real quickly that you can indeed use the Pixel Bud A's simultaneously with one earbud or both earbuds. So let me take a second here, turn back on Bluetooth, connect back up the Pixel Bud A's. Okay, we're gonna do this on Android because it's the easiest. Okay, so let me let this connect. As a matter of fact, let that connect. So now we're back on the, on the Android device. Y'all can see that right there, okay? Now we're just going to go into YouTube Music. And I'm going to turn down the volume so we don't get any copyright. So let me turn this volume all the way down. I just want to show y'all that it works. We're going to tap my liked playlist. Okay. And we're going to hit play. All right. So now... Music is playing from both earbuds, right? Y'all can see the music timeline playing there. Let me get that close on the screen. Music is playing from both earbuds. So now I can pull out both earbuds and the music is playing, all right? So you got stereo mode play on your Pixel Buds 8, all right? Now let's say I want to use one earbud at a time. Maybe I just want to use the right 
So all I gotta do is take the left, drop it back in the case, make sure it starts charging here. Let me seat that properly. Charging up, it's actually fully charged. Just wanna close the case. That's it. And now you can see we're listening to music strictly on the right ear butt. I wanna go back to stereo mode, open the case back up, pop the butt out. It instantly reconnects. Y'all can see no breaks in the music. Music still playing. Now we're back in stereo mode. Okay? Let's say I want to do it on the left. Pick the right up. Drop it in case. Boom. Let it start charging. It's fully charged. Close the case. Still playing on the left. Okay? Still getting all my notifications. Still playing. Everything works. So just like that, I want to go back to stereo mode, take it out, boom, back in stereo mode, seamless, no breaks in the music. So you can indeed use the Pixel Bud A series in stereo mode as well as independent mode, right? So I just wanted to demo that there. and Y'all can see at no point did the music stop playing, okay? All right. So now what I would like to do for everyone, and hopefully we don't run into any more issues, is I want to cut in a previously recorded section of the video, walking y'all through the Bluetooth earbud button controls and the companion application. Then we're going to go ahead and continue on with the rest of the review. So I'm going to cut in that previously recorded clip now. And I will see you guys on the other side. I'll be right back. All right, everyone. So in this portion of the video, I just want to give everyone a real nice and prompt application walkthrough for the Pixel Buds application that you will use with either your Pixel Buds Pro or your Pixel Bud A series from Google. Now. Although I did demonstrate the pairing process on an iOS device and a different Android device, the uh, Pixel Buds application is available on any Android device, whether it's a Pixel or any available Android device, okay? And I actually found that it was easier to just use the same device that I recorded the full review with. So we are using my Samsung Galaxy S10e to walk through the application. And I'll have all links to where y'all can download the application, everything that y'all need to know, located down below in the video description. So let's go ahead and walk through the application. So now, real quickly, I just wanted to show y'all that I do have the Pixel Buds A's connected up to my S10e. You can see it right there, okay? Let me let that pan through one more time. Okay, you can see it right there. And then the application you're going to need if you're on Android is right here, the Pixel Buds application. Now, if you're on iOS, as I said earlier, you don't need an application. They don't have one on the uh, Apple App Store. You just pair it up as you would a traditional set of Bluetooth earbuds and you lose certain functionalities depending on the application that you use and the app support. But when you have an Android device or a Pixel device, you launch into the application. It pretty much works like um, AirPods if you have a Pixel device. So you open the case, okay, with the application installed. It's going to automatically connect and then automatically walk you through the setup process for the application, walk you through the different features, the button controls, all that good stuff. All right. So it's already been done on my S10e so we tap on the application here and then by default we're greeted with this screen here now if you do have the case open let me open the case and show y'all real quick it will show you the case's battery okay when it detects that the case is open or when you first take the buds out of the case now uh, the buds are out of the case so it's not going to show you the case battery, but when you take the buds out of the case or you first open the case with the buds still in the case and you're taking them out, you will get the battery percentage for the case as well. Okay, let's close that case. 
Other than that, when you when you open the application, this is the home screen that you're greeted with, and you get the name of the buds. You can rename the buds to anything you would like. I named it to uh, Eric's Pixel Buds A series. Then you get the charging levels for the battery on each earbud. So you can see we got 95 on the left, 95 on the right. Now, if you want to name it or rename it, you hit this pencil. It lets you rename it. Okay. Now I'm not going to allow it because I already have it set. Matter of fact, yeah, we'll just go ahead and allow it. You can see I can rename it. I'm not going to. So we're going to hit cancel. And then if you want to get into other settings or you need help with something, you hit the three dot hamburger menu in the top right. And you can see it lets you know the devices, get your help, and you can send feedback if you're having an issue. Now, other than that, we can control a few different things here. So you can see un underneath our status for the buds and the case, depending, we got uh, Google Assistant notifications and preferences. So if we tap on this, then it's going to go out and look for different updates and it will walk you through the different things that you can do with the buds. So play music, next track, previous track, make assistant calls, it will announce notifications, so on and so forth. Okay. All right. And it's just walking you through how you would do that. You can also say your voice prompt. I'm not going to say it because it's going to trigger. Okay. You could do voice match. Okay. And now it's going to let you know that it will announce uh, your notifications. All you have to do is do a press and hold and wait for that boop. And then it will announce the notifications on your phone. You'll also get a boop when you get new notifications. Okay. You can double tap to stop the notifications at any time. Okay. And then here we're greeted with some other settings that you can control. So we got diagnostic controls here. So if you're running into any issues, you can disable or enable certain features. Okay. Or if you're running into any issues with the OTA updates, you could disable or enable any features here. Okay. Coming out of that, this is the tutorials. So pretty much this will walk you through the written tutorials on anything that you need to know about your buds. And you can search it here. Okay. And it just lets you know what's required on Android devices. Okay. Coming out of that. Then here you got your spoken notifications for pretty much any application that you would like. So we're going to let this load up. And any application that you would like can announce spoken notifications here. You toggle it off and on as you see fit. Or you can toggle it off if you don't want any spoken notifications. Okay. You can also toggle off and on the uh, voice command activation you could toggle off and on if you hear that prompt when it's activated and I gotta say the the feedback and touch response and audible prompts that Google has put into their buds are top notch this is probably the first set of touch controls that I don't really have too much of an issue with because they've integrated everything so nicely together okay Y'all know I'm not a big fan of touch controls, but the way these are set up, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But you can disable the sounds if you would like. You can disable the voice assistant if you would like. You can check the uh, connected status here. You can check your model and buds for the earbuds here. Okay. And you can also check more information on that in another area I'm going to show y'all. Then we have warranty and safety information. Always important to know that. And you can send diagnostics to Google if you would like. Okay. Coming out of that, we do have a find my buds feature here. Okay. So it will go ahead and locate the buds for you by letting you ring them if you would like with them connected to your device. So if you lose them in the bed, you lose them in the couch. You lose them around the house somewhere, you can locate them and ring them to find them. So really good stuff there as well. Coming out of that. And then we have our touch controls. Now I'm not going to do a full touch control like I would do, 
because Google walks through it so nicely here. So you turn on touch controls and then it tells you. So you got single tap for play and pause, which will also answer and end phone calls. You got double tap for next track or double tap to reject an incoming phone call. You have triple tap for previous track that will also restart the track and or go to the previous track. And then you have a press and hold to activate your voice assistant or you could say the hot phrase or voice command. And then if you tap on it, it gives you a nice visual representation of what to do. So you can see single tap, it will play, single tap, it will pause, tap it again to dismiss it, double tap, it will go to the next track, double tap, it will reject an incoming phone call, tap it again to dismiss it, okay? Triple tap will take you to a previous track, or restart the current track, okay? Tap it again to dismiss it, so really good stuff there. And then the press and hold will activate your voice assistant. Now, again, the voice assistant activation does not work on iOS. This is Android exclusive, okay? It doesn't matter what Android you have, as long as it's an Android running um, Android 9.0 or better, you can have all these features. Okay, but again, tap and hold, get you your voice assistant, or you can say the hot word or key phrase, okay, and it will go off. And if you don't like that, you can disable your touch controls altogether right here, okay? Now, moving on from that, this is where your sound equalizer is. And this is where your bass controls are. So if we come in here to the sound equalizer, you can see by default it's turned on. And I do believe it's set to it's set to zero by default. But if you want to crank up the bass, you can go as high as four. And you can dial down the bass as low as negative one. Now when I was doing my fit and sound demo, I left it right here at zero. Okay? And I left it exactly how it comes on out of the box. So you can see we got volume EQ and it tells you what it does. And then we have adaptive sound and it tells you what it does. And the adaptive sound takes advantage of the extra microphones and sensors to equalize the pressure in your ears to cut down on, cut down on overall discomfort. All right. But you can toggle this off and on as you would like to save battery. And the funny thing that I noticed, and I'm probably going to reiterate this again in the battery section, is that you really get better battery life connecting it to an iOS device because you don't have as many features running. On an Android device, you can't really turn off all the features. There are a certain amount of features that are always running. So the battery life for the Pixel Buds A on an Android device is noticeably worse on Android than it is on iOS. And I actually got better battery life using the buds with an iOS device than an Android device. Kind of strange, but I just wanted to mention that. But that's where you would go to do your sound controls and your bass settings. Okay. Other than that, coming out of here, we do have in-ear detection, similar to what you have on Galaxy Buds. So there is a sensor that will play and pause your music or our videos when it detects that you take the earbuds out. Y'all know I'm not a fan of that, so y'all can see I have that disabled. But Google Buds do have that, and it does walk you through what that feature does. Okay? Right there. So in-ear detection. And then we have more settings here. And this is where you can do your firmware updates. So you could do it automatically or you can set it up to be done manually. Then you can see we got individual parts numbers for the buds themselves and the case. Okay. And you can see the, form the firmware versions for each. Okay. Moving on down, we do have the about. So if you want to know the model numbers for your case, your buds, so on and so forth is here in the about section along with the name and the tutorials which I showed y'all earlier. Do that there. You also have tips and support 
And again, this walks you through everything that you need to know in terms of troubleshooting, if you have any questions, so on and so forth. And you can also send feedback from here as well. Okay, let's get out of that. Another, uh, another area to send your feedback is down here under send feedback. We do have email notifications. Okay. Okay. I might just gray that out. Y'all don't need to see my email there. And then again, we have safe and safety and warranty information here. Okay. Pretty much self-explanatory. And that's pretty much it. When we talk about the companion application for your Pixel Buds. Very clean, very straightforward, very easy to understand. And again, the setup process was super simple. You just turn on the Bluetooth on your device. You enable the location. You put the buds in the case. You open the case. It will walk you through the whole process from there. And all you need is an Android device or a Pixel device. All right. So this goes through an overall walkthrough of the Bluetooth button controls for your Pixel Buds and an overall application walkthrough for the Google Buds application. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this part of the video and I hope you found it helpful. And now let's go ahead and jump back in to the full review. All right, you know how we do. Have a good one, y'all. I'll see y'all on the other side. Peace. Whew, okay, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed those last two parts of the video. I do apologize that there's going to be so many breaks in this full review. Again, because I have so many Android devices, whether it has Bluetooth on or not, because it basically uses my Wi-Fi network to determine which devices are compatible when it comes to Android, as soon as I put the Pixel Buds in the parent mode, it's like, oh, oh, we're compatible with all of these. And then it starts giving me the pop-up on all the devices. Oh, you want to connect on this one? And I have to quickly tap no or quickly tap out of the connect prompt on the device that I'm recording the video with for it to not stop the video. So because I was recording the video with the S10e and it pops up um, with that prompt, because the, S10, the S10e is connected to my Wi-Fi. It popped up. It's like, oh, this one will work. And it pops up while I'm recording. I had to quickly tap out for it not to pause the video. So I do apologize. I typically don't have that many mistakes with these AirBud videos. But this video will have a lot of breaks in the video there. But hopefully, if you follow along with the video, you know just how to get everything set up and connected to your devices. Again... Whether you're using iOS, right here, or you're using Android, right here, okay? And then also, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the application walkthrough, including the Bluetooth AirBud button controls. And now, let's move on with the rest of the video okay so up next now what I want to do for everyone is we're gonna go on and move on to some other categories here okay so now we're just gonna go ahead and move on to what's our next category the uh, Bluetooth range and strength okay now, again, as I said earlier, in terms of the Bluetooth, we're rocking Bluetooth 5.0 right here, okay? And sure, it might be an older Bluetooth, but it still works just as good. And honestly, y'all, I haven't had any issues with it. So, y'all know my saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Bluetooth 5.0 works just as good as the latest Bluetooth. So I can understand why Google wanted to save a little bit of money and not include the latest and greatest version of Bluetooth, okay? But in terms of the Bluetooth, it's rocking Bluetooth 5.0. And in terms of the range, it has a standard range of 10 meters or 33 feet, and it pretty, work, pretty much works flawlessly. 
I didn't have any issues in terms of the range. I didn't have any issues in terms of the strength as long as I was within that 10 meters or 33 foot range. Okay. Moving on now, let's move on to the other categories. Talking about the overall durability. Again, I touched on this earlier. Because it's built out of plastic, the overall durability on these is top notch in my overall opinion. Now, in my about two weeks with the earbuds, I would say I've dropped them about four times onto different combinations of surfaces. Now, in my home here, I have a combination of wood and tile. Okay, I've dropped it about two times in my bedroom slash office here. Okay, and at the gym, they have a combination of like grippy matte material, kind of like what you see on my phone stand here. It's grippy matte material throughout the whole gym. I dropped it in the gym a couple times as well. And let me just show y'all, it's still, they still look in basically new condition. No dings, no dents, no scratches, no none of that. And I would say it probably dropped from about five feet because it dropped out of my pocket. Okay. No issues whatsoever when we talk about the overall durability. So in my opinion, I would say the durability on these is top notch. Now, you still want to be extremely careful, right? Because although it, the durability is top notch, all it does take is one drop to potentially break the earbuds. But if you're more clumsy, like myself, Mr. Super Clumsy, they are more apt to survive if you accidentally drop them. But please, still do be careful, okay? But the overall durability on these is top notch in my opinion, okay? Up next now, let's go over the charge times and the overall battery life on these earbuds, okay? Let's go. Now, in terms of the charge times and battery life, let's cover the manufacturer's estimates first, and then we'll go ahead and talk about my estimates and my overall experiences, right? So, in terms of the manufacturer's estimates for battery life, the buds themselves are supposed to get you five hours on a single charge. And then including the charging case, you get an additional 24 hours, right? Meaning if you do the math, the, the charging case should get you almost five additional charges. Almost. It's like 4.5 or 4.8 uh, additional charges somewhere in there to get you that 24 hour mark. Now, they did not specify charge times for the buds. They did not specify charge times for the case. So I had to do my own individual testing to find out the charge times for both of these. Okay? So that goes over the manufacturer's estimates, which came directly from Google site. So again, five hours on a single charge with the buds, and then including the case, you're supposed to get an additional 24 hours or about 4.5 or 4.8 additional charges. Okay? That goes over that. Now, talking about my particular estimates, my particular results and experiences, let me tell y'all what I got. Now, talking about battery life, I was averaging between four and five hours, just over five hours in stereo mode. Now, for reference, I use these earbuds at 35% volume during testing and 50% volume during testing. And I was averaging between four and just over five hours on a single charge, right? Now, in terms of the additional charges from the charging case, I was not getting four. I wasn't even getting close to five. I was getting three additional charges at best, okay? So if you factor that in, including the charging case, it was getting me between four to five hours, and then including the case, I was getting between 12 and 15 hours, or just below 16 hours, including the charging case. And again, the charging case was getting me three additional charges. That's in stereo mode. 
Again, being used at 35 and 50% volume. Now, in independent mode, for some strange reason, the battery life got worse. So instead of averaging four to five hours in independent mode, I was averaging like three hours, okay? About three, almost six, all right? So essentially, what happened was, if you include the charging case, it was getting me about three to six hours independently. That's using the buds one after the other, okay? And then including the charging case, I just multiply by the additional charge times. So three times three additional charges is nine hours. Six times three additional charges is 18 hours. So for some strange reason, I was not getting anywhere close to Google's manufactured battery life estimates for the buds or the case. Now, again, as I said earlier, I am an extremely heavy user. I stream a lot of movies. I stream a lot of music. I take a lot of phone calls. I take a lot of video calls. And when you do that, the battery life on these buds seems to plummet, okay? Not go down, not take a hit, plummet, okay? And that makes me kind of sad considering just how good these buds are and how good the microphones on these buds are. So the fact that they have really bad battery life, I was almost crying, y'all. I was almost crying because the fit on these, great. The mics on these, great. The sound quality on these, great. So the, the, the aside from the fact that the bass on these wasn't the best, and the battery life, that's what's really holding these buds back, in my opinion. But that goes over the battery life on the buds. Now, talking about the charge times for the buds and the charge time for the case. With my particular testing, charging up the buds is going to take about an hour. Okay? And again, I already showed y'all earlier, when you got the buds in the case, it's going to light up orange. Okay? It's going to light up orange. You can see it right there. That means the buds are charging. When the buds are fully charged, that's going to turn white. Now, when you close the case, it's going to give you the status for the case itself. So, white means close to fully charged or fully charged. And then a flashing orange LED means that the, the case battery is low and it needs to charge. When you open the case, it's going to give you the battery status for the buds. So, right now it's charging. And when you open the case and it's white, that means they're fully charged. Right now, as I said, charging up the buds themselves is going to take about an hour. Charging up the case via the USB Type C charging port is going to take about 45 minutes. Yes, 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 yes. You heard me right. Charging up the case with the USB port is going to take about 45 minutes. I was dumbfounded. How fast? the charging case for the Pixel Buds charges. I was dumbfounded how fast the buds charge when you put them in the case, okay? And keep in mind, when I say the buds charge from, uh, they take about an hour to reach a fully char a full charge. When I say full charge, that means I was charging them from dead, zero to full, okay? If I caught them at the low battery notification, which goes off at about 15% left, it charged up even faster. So if I wanted to get a quick top-up charge and I didn't want to drain them all the way, um, it would charge up in well under an hour, like 45 minutes. So the fact that the case and the buds pretty much charge up at about the same time, that leads me to say that the charge times on these are top-notch. And the overall charge times for the case are top notch, okay? And the fact that you can get a 75% charge in about 15 minutes, that's crazy, okay? That's crazy. So that goes over my particular battery life with the buds. That goes over my particular charging stats with the buds and the case. 
So an hour for the case, 45 minutes for the buds. I mean, an hour for the buds, 45 minutes for the case. I'll have my stats thrown up in post as I always do so y'all can see my actual numbers. Because I'm all about keeping it straight 100 around here. Keep in mind, these are just my particular results. And your particular results may vary depending on what you're doing with the buds and your particular charge percentages when you plug in the case or when you drop the buds into the case. Okay? Recommendations. I would recommend you keep the volume on the, on the buds at about 50%. That's when they really come alive. Okay? But that's just my recommendation for recommended volumes. But you use the buds and you figure out what works best for you in terms of battery life and overall sound quality, volume, and bass. Okay? So that goes over the charge times. That goes over the overall battery life with the buds and the case. Now let's move on to some other categories. Up next now... I just want to briefly summarize the positives and the negatives of these buds. Then we're going to go ahead and get into the final part of the video where we're going to talk about my final thoughts. I'm going to talk about overall pricing and availability, and I'm going to get into my overall recommendations. So if you watch no other part of the full review for these Pixel Bud A's, as long as you watch this next section, you should get a good general idea of how I feel about the buds. So let's get into the positives and negatives of these buds. All right, positive number one, the overall build quality and design for the buds is top notch. Positive number two, these buds have a really solid core feature set. Pretty much everything you need in a set of Bluetooth earbuds is packed in with these. Positive number three, the overall sound quality and volume on these is top notch, okay? Positive number four, the overall microphone performance on these is top notch. Positive number five, if you don't have a bunch of devices, the overall pairing steps on these is top notch. Positive number six, the overall Bluetooth range and strength on these is really good. Not quite top notch, but really good. It would have been top notch if, if I could have got more than 10 meters or 33 feet, but because it hits in line with the manufacturer's estimates, it's really good. Okay, I'm spoiled by really good Bluetooth range. So the fact that it was right on par with estimates just makes it really good. The overall durability on these is top notch. The overall charge times on these is top notch. Whether we're talking about the buds or the case itself, charges up really, really fast. And these are available at a really good price in my overall opinion, and the overall comfort on these is top notch as well, okay? That goes over all of the positives in my overall opinion, okay? Now, let's jump into the negatives, all right? And essentially, there's only two, maybe three major negatives on these. Let's walk through it. Negative number one, no built-in wireless charging into the charging case. And for the price, that really should have been here, okay? Negative number two, no built-in percentage readout for the case, okay? And again, learning this percentage and what the LEDs means is not hard, but having a built-in percentage readout display would have cut down on all the confusion. So that's why that's something that I asked for on all my Bluetooth earbuds. So that's negative number two, no built-in percentage readout display. Okay? Definitely need to have that. And then negative number three, the damn battery life on the buds is horrible. Come on, Google, you gotta do better than this. And why is the battery life better in stereo mode and worse in independent mode? That doesn't make any sense. So the battery life on these definitely needs some improvements. Definitely, definitely. It's almost a deal breaker. Especially for the price? Nah, B. 
No, B. For the price, I could just go get that. No. So, those are the three major negatives, in my opinion. The overall uh, battery life of the Buds definitely needs some improvements. No built-in wireless charging and no percentage readout display. Okay? Add to that, the overall base on these definitely needs some improvements. Although it's good, I'm putting it in the negative category because it just didn't have that punch and that grit that I would like. So it's good base, but it definitely needs some improvements. But that goes over the positives, and that goes over the negatives. And as I always do, I'll throw up a full list of the positives and a full list of the negatives in post. So please feel free to pause the video wherever you see the set list that you're interested in, and you should be good to go. And as always, I am not perfect, and I never claim to be. So if you watch the video, and you realize that there's a positive that I forgot to mention, and or there's a negative that I forgot to mention, please leave that feedback down below in the comments. As always, all feedback is greatly appreciated. Just remember to keep it respectful, please. It's only through providing our feedback that we can get better products. So all feedback is always greatly appreciated. Just remember, Keep it respectful, please. This is a grown-up platform. We're supposed to be grown-ups. Grown-ups can handle themselves in a respectful manner. Okay? If you can't handle yourself in a respectful manner, respectfully, don't comment. Okay? Please, 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 please. All feedback is appreciated, but keep it respectful, please. Okay? That goes over the positive. I'm, I'm tired of hiding comments. I'm tired of deleting comments. I just want to make that painfully apparent, okay? So, that goes over the positives. That goes over the negatives. Let's keep it pushing now. Let's jump into the final part of the video. Let's talk pricing. Let's talk final thoughts. Let's talk overall recommendations, okay? And as I always do, I have a screenshot thrown up in post of exactly what I paid for these. Okay, now in terms of the pricing, I got these bad boys on the Amazon payment program, and essentially, I just had to pay four payments of $33. Okay, and essentially, you do the first payment with the taxes, so essentially, it's three payments of $33, and then these are all mine. As of the recording of this video, I am a couple payments away. I a couple payments. I am a couple days away from payment number two. Okay. So as of the recording of this video, I've only done I've only done one payment. Okay. But when everything is all said and done, these bad boys should run me just over a hundred dollars. I think it's like a hundred and five dollars, a hundred and five dollars and change, something like that. Again. Check out the screenshot of my receipt, my digital receipt, thrown up in post. Now, for that price, and I do believe that it's still going for the same price. Okay, let me just check it real quick. Let me pull up Amazon real quick because I want to give y'all the most accurate information. Okay, so let me just pull my Amazon up and let me go to my orders. And I'm going to tell y'all in real time what the Pixel Bud A's are going for. Okay, so here it is right here. And let's tap the live link. And yep, 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 yep. So I now I don't I don't want to show y'all because it has my address in it. Let me see if I can scroll up and you won't see my address. Yeah, I think like that. So, let me show y'all this. So, right now, this is live. It's going for $9.99, $99, dollars $100, and you can see all the colors. So, we got dark olive, we got charcoal, and we got clearly white. And if you scroll up, if you're a qualified customer, you can get it for that $100 tag or three payments of $33. It's essentially four payments, but they said three payments. It's four payments. But 
That's only for Amazon qualified customers, which I am. If you're not an Amazon qualified customer, you're only going to see that tag right there. $99, which essentially means it's going to come up to $105 after taxes. Now, let's check the used category. All right, so right now, as of the recording of this video, you can actually get these used for $74, including shipping. And you got so many other used offerings. Okay? Okay. So, that's the price that they're going for right now, and that's the price that I paid for them. Now, that being said, let's get into overall uh, final thoughts and recommendations. Are these a good pair of earbuds? Yes. Can I recommend that y'all pick up these earbuds? Yes. Only if you can deal with the negatives that I pointed out, okay? Primarily, the battery life, the lack of wireless charging, and the lack of the built-in percentage readout display. If you can deal with those negatives, then yes, I can recommend that y'all pick these up. But listen to me. This is important. I can, only I can only recommend that y'all pick these up if you can get them for under $100, okay? These earbuds at anything over $100 is too much, okay? Right there. If you're going to pay $100 and more, you need to be rocking with Samsung, okay? But if you can get these anywhere between... 60 and let's say $80, scoop them, scoop them up. Especially if you have a Pixel device. If you have a Pixel device and you scoop up these, that Pixel device is going to work how AirPods work for iOS devices. Okay? So if you want the iOS of Android and you have a Pixel, you need to be rocking Pixel Buds. Okay? I don't know if that analogy made sense. But again, you only want to be picking these up if you can get them for between $60 and $80, okay? And as always, I'll have the uh, purchasing links available down below in the video description along with all of my other extended coverage, as I always do. And those purchasing links will have affiliated links in them, meaning I do get a small percentage of kickback that I do put back into the channel so I can keep bringing you guys and gals content at no additional cost to you guys and gals. All right, that pretty much does it for this full review, all right? Once again, can I recommend these? I would have to say yes, but only if you can deal with the negatives that I pointed out and only if you can get it for between 60 and 80 dollars. You don't want to pay more than $100 for these. And also, let me answer the last important question. Will I be keeping these? Well, I'm going to keep them for now until I pay them off. And then I'll probably go get the Pixel Bud Pros. Because the Pixel Bud Pros have a lot better battery life hitting that 11 hour mark okay and granted i do believe i can get the pixel bud pros on the same payment program for a little bit more so let me see let me see what those pixel buds pro is going for okay so pixel bud a's a hundred dollars or 33 dollars a month for three months four months pixel buds Pro, let's see. Buds Pro. Pixel Buds Pro. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, so the Pixel Buds Pro is not available on the payment program, so the Pixel Buds Pro would be. $200. Yeah, no. Not paying that. Yeah, no. No. Maybe when it comes down to like 80 bucks, I'll take a look at it. But $200? No. 
not picking up the Pixel Buds Pro. So I guess, yeah, we're going to be holding on to these for quite some time, okay? And I'll come out with any other follow-up videos I feel are necessary. But that essentially, guys and gals, does it for this full review. As always, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video and or you found it helpful. If you did, you know what to do. Again, I do apologize for having so many breaks in the videos. These things happen. It is what it is. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of re-records. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of crazy edits. Y'all know everything is raw and unscripted around here. So what happens when we push record happens. That being said, I still do hope y'all found it helpful. I hope everyone is having a great day. Hope you guys and gals are staying safe out there. And I will catch everyone on the next one. We are out of here. Have a good one, everybody. Peace. I'm throwing up the peace sign behind the camera like y'all can see it. Peace. Have a good one, y'all. We're out of here.